Hello and welcome back to Live Drawing with Octopolis. I'm Brian Miller and today we are going to have so much fun working on part two of our Big Jim and the Holograms sketch painting. Let's see if we can zoom in on this art just a little bit more. There we go. That looks pretty good. So doing an early stream today. Hope everybody's doing well. And uh, just lots of Zoom calls and meetings and stuff today. So I thought I'd get in and get creative early. So hopefully that'll work out good for you guys too. Uh, but yeah, Jim and Holograms part two. Really having fun with this one. Uh, it's been so much fun to watch it develop and see it take form. So we've already got Shana done. Today I'll be working on Jim. And then we'll have Kimber and then finally Aja. So lots of fun. Hope you've been enjoying watching. And of course, let me know your Jim and the holograms. If you have a favorite memory from the cartoon or one of the songs, or maybe you played with the toys. I don't know. Whatever it means to you. Maybe you watched that crazy live action movie version. If so, let me know. I, I watched it in preparation for this and uh, there's definitely stuff to talk about there. Let me know how you're doing and what you're up to. If you went crazy for St. Patrick's Day or not. You know, whatever. I'm here to hang out with you guys for sure. So, uh, and we're st streaming live today on Twitch, on Facebook, and on YouTube. So, I think I can see comments on Facebook and Twitch. I may not see comments on YouTube. So, if you're talking to me and I'm not responding, maybe hit one of those other channels. But I'm Octopolis on all three. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm an artist. I work for... Uh, Star Wars and Disney and Marvel and DC Comics and lots of fun pop culture stuff and just looking forward to uh, getting in here today and having fun with Jim and the hologram. So uh, like I said, finish Shana. I've got my rough sketch worked out for Jim and so now it'll just be a matter of uh, you know getting in and uh, putting in some of the details and all that kind of stuff. So we'll start mixing up some paint here and getting that going. And somewhere I've got a blank sheet that we can use to dub our paintbrush on. We'll definitely we'll need that as well. So, but yeah, good to see everybody here today. And I'm just gonna, there's gonna be lots of pink today. So I'm going to mix up some pink paint and we will start working on Jim today so that we can see everything that's going on with her. Should be a lot of fun. All right, so I'm just, I don't know if you can see much of this palette or not. I, I've only got so much room to work with here, but let's use this big top cup here. And it's going to take a little bit of red and a little bit of white. And we'll start with a really light pink value. And we'll work light to dark today. Sometimes I like to work dark to light. But I think with all these pinks, it'll be best to start light because it'd be really easy to go too dark on this. And I think we'll see that today that, you know, if we look at some of the original stuff, I mean, it does go to some really dark, like pink red values as well. But I think we're going to want to start fairly light today. So I'm going to put a lot of water in there too. Because especially with this gouache paint, and for those of you that are new to the channel, um, I'm using the Windsor Newton gouache. Let me get that in the camera there so you can see it. There we go. And so the cool thing about the gouache paints um, is you can sort of treat them uh, opaque. You can thin them down and treat them like watercolors. Um, and so we can see sort of like this pink value here. So that's still probably a little darker than we want to start with. So I'm gonna add just a bit more of our white to that. And maybe just a little bit more water because we wanna start pretty light and pretty thin and then build it up. If we go on too heavy at first, we won't be able to see the, the underdrawing either. So 
Voice important. Yeah, that's looking a lot nicer now. So that'll be a good a good place to start from, I think. All right. So I am going to just start by just kind of roughing in some of the pink wash on her clothing. May have to go to a smaller brush though. I usually like the big brush for the the big bold kind of strokes, but there's enough detail here that we need to step down a size. Let's try this one. All right. But yeah, I'm just going to get in and just start brushing in this pink, this sort of base pink color that we'll use um, here for Jim. And it doesn't have to be you know anything too too crazy or too careful because I just I want the underdrawing to show through and this will just be kind of like the first pass and the nice thing about the gouache is that you can go opaque and paint over it you can go really wet and reactivate it so in some ways it's not very forgiving but in other ways it's very forgiving because you can just keep working over it and over it which is nice But hopefully, hopefully you're uh, fans of all things 1980s and have some fond memories. I was really excited when I got this commission because, you know, I think I've, I've drawn just Jim before, but this will be, I think, the first time I've done Jim and the holograms, the entire band, and like a really nice you know, full color sketch commission of all four of them. So it's kind of a fun, a fun one to get to work on. Definitely been putting some time into it as well. So hopefully that shows, you know, these sketch commissions can be sometimes really loose and fast and other times a little bit more time consuming, but I don't mind. It's every, everyone's unique. And I just try to, you know, do what the art is sort of asking of me. Bex is on chat. Good to see you, Bex. Bex says, good morning. Good morning to you too, Bex. Let me know what you're up to. Are you currently on spring break? As most people seem to be right now. Seems like everybody's on spring break. I know the Everything's packed around here. You can't go anywhere. The people are out and about everywhere. And so some of these big highlights that I'm leaving behind, I'll probably paint into them a little bit, make them a little bit thinner and smaller. But there's, you know, in the sketch, it's just for a guideline anyway. Uh, Beck says, we don't get a spring break. What? What kind of nerd school are you going to that doesn't do a spring break? Or maybe that just means you're going to a, a real school, a good school. They're like, no spring break for you. You can do whatever it is you need to do and still get on Zoom. So just putting this on really, really light and thin uh, to start with. One is it doesn't need to be that dark. Uh, and two is I do want to be able to see my under drawing to add detail. But it'll just work out more nicely if we take our time and build it up with two or three two or three uh, levels of color. Uh, Beck says they gave us reading days instead to get students not to go places. All of us are like seriously burning out though. Wait, I have to say like like Shaggy. All of us are like seriously burning out though, Scoob. Yeah, I could see that, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, if you wanna see where everybody in the state of Arizona is, just come up to like Scottsdale or something because between the spring training and spring break, 
and the somewhat relaxed restrictions. I think they're doing 100% capacity at businesses here now. So all the restaurants and bars and things, they still have social distancing and mask, but they're at 100% capacity. Um, and I won't say where, but I did visit, I stopped to get gas at a small town in Arizona and they had preemptively pulled down all their mask signage and stuff, even though the state still has a mask mandate. So there's definitely some places that are not doing it at all. Uh, Bex is like, oh man, I totally forgot about spring training. That's scary, 100% capacity. Yeah, right. I mean, look, the good news is, is that I think our state's doing a really good job of getting the vaccine rolled out compared to some of the people I know from other states and talking to them. Um, so that's a positive, um, which is a good thing. Uh, but, you know, they can also jump the gun and just be like, we're giving out the vaccine, we're gonna reopen everything. But, you know, long before everyone's got the vaccine, right? So, um, you know, I understand what it is they want to do, but it'd be nice if maybe they waited another 30 or 60 days when we theoretically could have like a lot more people vaccinated and then open everything up. But I also understand that there's people who need to work and all that stuff. So I definitely see all sides, but from a safety standpoint, it seems like they're a little premature. Uh, Bex is like, yeah, I agree. It still seems like they're moving too fast to open. Yeah, exactly. That's all it is, is like, you know, look, we want good things for everybody. And I've been struggling just as much as a lot of other people and less than some. And I definitely understand the realities of needing to work and needing to make a living. So I would never judge anybody who's just trying to survive but um you know it'd be nice if the powers that be were doing a little bit more to be proactive and protect people that's all jim she's truly outrageous so quench press on here told me that all the episodes are on tubi tv which I had heard of, but didn't know anything about. And so I went and checked it out. It is totally free. You just have to watch commercials. So that's kind of cool. And they seem to have scooped up like just tons of animation. So if you're a fan of animation, whether it's Jim and the Holograms or not, uh, Tubi TV seems to have a bunch of it. And so I've been, I'm like maybe halfway through. That's not true. I was going to say I'm halfway through the first season. And then I remembered, oh wait, Jim was a daily cartoon. <laughs> no, I'm nowhere near halfway through the first season. I may be just like a week into it, but um, I've watched maybe like six or seven of the episodes. But um, I couldn't figure out why the first episode had like 10 minutes of like filler at the end of it. Like the last 10 minutes is all just basically like sneak peek at what's coming. And then I found out that the first like four or five episodes were originally part of like a Saturday morning short Thing where they would just do like little snippets of cartoons that might be coming and they use that to judge popularity so they would know what cartoons to make and so once they found out that this was it was going to be like hugely popular they took those first shorts and cut them together to make like the first four or five episodes and like oh now it makes sense now it, it makes total sense why that seemed why they seemed so bizarre it's like, oh, because they were really just like, you know, several like 10 minute things that were edited together. And I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. So Bex, you and your crew are staying in your dorms or apartments or whatever it is. And it sounds like the school is trying to motivate everyone to do that. Although I'm not sure reading list is the way to motivate young college age people these days. Maybe like more like a Netflix list, a streaming list. Uh, 
or dare I say a drinking list. They're like, yeah, we distributed cocktail books to all the students to try to encourage them to stay in school. Be like, mission accomplished. <clears throat> So yeah, Jim and the Holograms had three seasons of cartoons. Um, <clears throat> and initially, the uh, the line of Jim figures uh, was outselling Barbie. And so that really scared Mattel. And so that's when Mattel came up with the idea for Barbie and the Rockers. Which I don't know anything about other than it was designed to compete with and destroy Jim and the Holograms. Uh, Beck says, uh, reading days are basically supposed to be free days, but they're more catch up for grad school peeps. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Be like, get caught up with all of your work everything you need to do. And so those those three seasons of Jim and the Holograms, uh, you know, Christy Marks, the great writer Christy Marks, of tons of animation that you would recognize. You know, she gets like full creative credit, which is really nice because she, she really did just, I think, you know, get some photographs of what some of the action figures were going to look like and like turn that into like a whole big story. So um, it's nice that she does get like the full credit because uh, it seems like she did all the work to develop the, the characters in the story and everything. Uh, Beck says, I've been going around with moving my grandpa to Kansas and then up in Minnesota for a bit and then grandma's funeral. It's been so crazy. Oh my goodness. Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. And especially you're, you're very much like a family type person. So I could see that being, being crazy and stressful for sure. Now I'm going to put on some light pink into Jim's hair and I'm going to do it really wet. And my goal here is to kind of wet the paper a little bit um, in the light spots so that when I come back with a little bit darker pink, um, we can get some like blending and bleeding and stuff going on here. So hopefully that'll work out good for us, but that'll be the goal. And then by the time we get to her bangs, she's got a little bit of blonde and stuff in those. So I'll probably do those uh, after I get the, the like pink part of her hair done. But I want to start out and keep it really, really light. Well, Bex, I'm sorry you had to deal with the funeral and stuff. I know, I know from experience how how hard and trying family funerals and stuff can be. And there's nothing like grief. It it brings out the best in some people as far as like their caring ability, and it brings out the worst in other people. So. Just try to do some like wispy little strokes in her hair. Keep it organic looking, you know. I mean, even though it's supposed to be like big 80s structured hair, um, we can still kind of keep it flowing and don't want it to get like too stiff or too structured. Let me know what you guys have been watching. Let me know what, if there's any cartoons from your childhood that you're super nostalgic for. Uh, Beck says, I'm finally back in Arizona. It's definitely an experience. It was weird in some ways too, because it was mostly extended family. I don't know as well. Yeah, that's always tough, right? Like cousins and aunts and uncles and half, you know, people that you're like only sort of related to that you maybe, you know, 
you saw them once when you were five years old and then never again like that's stressful and you know they each have their own memories and relationship with the deceased and it's different than what yours are and it's tough i really had to come to terms with that kind of stuff when my father passed away um he had remarried after i was like college aged and stuff and so i didn't really have a relationship with his new wife and um you know she had like kids and grandkids and stuff and so you know i had to come to terms with the fact that like my father had essentially had a, a, an entirely new family you know he he had experiences with them that, that were completely different than the, my experiences with him and it took me a long time after his his death to kind of resolve that so again i'm just going to work in just a really light wash of pink here and i'm keeping it really wet i'm really just trying to wet the paper even so that you know it'll, it'll probably dry on me before i get there but so at least i can come back and re-wet it and and really just start to bring out you know some richer deeper values but when it comes to the hair i really kind of want the I want to be able to come back with a deeper color and have it start to bleed in to the lighter value. I don't want it to look too, too harsh. And then when we come back for the third pass, then I'll probably come in more with like a dry brush and, and let it really look a little bit more layered and a little bit more structured. So just kind of playing around. I try not to get too, too hung up on these things because you really never know how it's all going to turn out until you do it. Uh, Vex is like, I was the only grandkid at the funeral. Oh my gosh, that is tough. So definitely lots of aunts and uncles and older people and kind of like, Probably feel completely out of out of sorts. All right, so let's. Well, I guess we'll work from from left to right to be safe, as always. Just come in and start to bring a little bit more detail into this hair. do a little bit probably do like a whole level of this and then you know I can grab a smaller brush and start to go a little bit more detail and finer hair strokes and things like that but for now just just roughing it in Kind of just getting the general direction and flow. Uh, Beck says, yeah, it was mostly my dad and my aunt's cousins and grandma's siblings. Oh, yeah, that's... I don't know, did you guys have a bunch of, like, family reunion stuff? Like, did you really know these people? Or was it a lot of people that, you know, you're related to them, but for all intents and purposes, they're kind of like strangers. I know when I was a kid, we would do these... My grandmother had a lot of family in Kansas and we were in Missouri and we'd once a year go to Kansas to do like a family reunion. And I said, I didn't know any of these people. Oh, hey, Catherine, good to see you on here. Hey, Evan, good to see you. Evan says, I'm here, but I'm on the road. Oh, thanks, Evan. I appreciate the support, man. Uh, Catherine says, Jim, and she cheered 25 bits. Thank you, Catherine. Appreciate it. A little bit of an early stream today. I was saying I've got a bunch of Zoom meetings and things, so I'm trying to get in here and just get some stuff going on, Jim, today. Really having fun with this one. Just starting to rough in the hair, you know. I think this hair, it'll take several passes to build up and make 
look nice. So just starting to work on, on just roughing that in. Start with our kind of light pink and then we'll go deeper and darker. And then she's got a little bit of blonde in her bangs, so we'll probably do that bit at the end. Let's try to get that going. And you know, it's a sketch paint, so I'm trying not to get too uptight. I try to just let everything flow and not hope for the best, but I try not to be too too tense or too controlling with the paint just just kind of let it happen uh catherine says i will have to rewatch the video i have an appointment in 30 minutes oh well i understand that that's kind of my day today it's like it's all it's all meetings and calls and stuff like that so i get it but yeah definitely stay for as long as you can and then Come back and rewatch when you get the chance. I'm having fun with it. I don't know, Catherine. Did you get a chance to to watch any of the uh, episodes of the animation on Tubi or check out that Jim live action movie on Netflix? Because boy, there's a lot to unpack there. Let me tell you. I'm just gonna kind of fade the hair out on this right hand side because Kimber is going to be Kimber's going to be right here, and she's got red hair, so it'll probably overlap into that and stuff. So this between the hair and the dress, I'll probably alternate so that things can dry, but it's gonna be a lot of pink, a lot of pink, but that's okay. That's why we're here. We're here for all the cool pink stuff. We'll try to build up some some layers and some levels of color so that it looks a little bit more dynamic. Uh, Catherine says, I watched the cartoon when it was on Netflix. Good, excellent. Yeah, I think I watched a couple when they were on either Netflix or Amazon or something. And then now that they're on Tubi, I've rediscovered it. And I was saying, I think I watched like, over the last couple of days while I've been working, I think I've, I've had them on in the background, maybe like the first seven or something, you know? And I was like, oh, I'm probably like halfway through the season. And then I, I was saying, I remembered that like, oh, it was, a, it was a daily cartoon. So like, that's only, I've only watched like one week's worth of gym, so. Kind of funny to think about that. I haven't looked to see. I know it was three seasons, but I haven't looked to see how many episodes there were each season. We forget about that there was like daily cartoons where there was like a new episode every day. Now that we have like Netflix and stuff and so many shows are like a whole season's like eight episodes or something. You're like, that would have been just like one week of Jim. <laughs> oh, Catherine says, it turns out the cartoon movie I rented every week as a kid was five episodes smooshed into a movie. That's funny. That's, that's what I was just saying before you got on. I couldn't figure out why the first couple of episodes were so short and literally had like 10 minutes worth of filler at the end. It'd be like... Here's what's coming up on Jim. It'll be like just 10 minutes of filler. And then I was reading that they had uh, done this, Hasbro had this sort of like Saturday morning, I forgot what it was called, but basically like a show on Saturday mornings that had multiple cartoons. And um, that's what they used to judge if something was going to be popular. And then once they decided that Jim was going to be popular, they took those five or whatever shorts and cut those and that became the first like week of episodes and I'm sure that's also what they combined together to make that movie uh, Evan says what's Tubi uh, so Tubi TV is like a streaming service and from what I've seen so far it's free you just get commercials so and they've got a ton 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 of animation on there so um, and I figured that must be why so many of those shows are no longer on like Netflix 
and Amazon and, and stuff because I think Tubi's come in and uh, bought the rights to a lot of that stuff. Because even like on YouTube, I think it used to be that a lot of the gym episodes were on YouTube. And if you look now, you can only find, you know, a couple like the introduction and some of the music videos, but most of the episodes are gone. So I think Tubi must have snatched up the rights to lots of animation. I'm gonna make just a little bit of a darker shade of pink so that we can start to bring in some more detail. So yeah, I think it's, if you search for it, it's either like tubi.tv or tubitv.com or something like that, but they seem to have a lot of content. And it's definitely aimed at kids, I think, because most of the commercials I've seen are like for like, you know, educational content for like people who are trying to teach their kids during the pandemic and stuff like that, you know, so. All right, let's see how dark this pink is. Might be time to go down a brush size. Evan says, that's cool. Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, I had heard about it, but I had assumed it was like another paid streaming service and I didn't realize that it was like just ad supported. I mean, they may have a paid level, I don't know, but especially I know you've got uh, a kid and stuff, so might be something. Uh, Catherine says, one of my favorite Comic-Con moments was meeting the voice of Jim and she signed my pop. Oh, that is really cool. That's really cool. Did you meet the singing voice or the acting voice of Jim? Since it was two different people. And they're both in the live action film, by the way. So that's another reason to watch that silly movie is that both of the voice actors are in the film. Um, as is Jim creator Christy Marks. And I'm sure there's some other uh, cameos and stuff in there that I didn't recognize, but I recognize those people for sure. So now I'm just going to start to work a little bit more detail into this costume or her clothing. And some of these brighter points, I'll probably do like some, some lighter pinks on and um, come back with some white paint and hit and stuff. So, I mean, I think, you know, what I'm learning with this is that the idea of like a sketch paint, it can kind of go anywhere you want it to go. It can be really loose, maybe really simple. I think it just kind of evolves based on the, based on what the character is and how much time I have to devote to it, that kind of thing. Um, oh, Catherine says, met the acting voice. Cool, that's very cool. Evan says, I'm getting a new Mac. Well, that's cool, that's awesome. What, what Mac are you getting? I'm, I'm an iMac guy myself. I always seem to pick up those, but I've heard amazing things about the higher end stuff, but I've never, never really had one. Mostly, I think that's because when I started out, you know, I was having an outfit an entire studio. And so when we were buying like four and six computers at a time, it was always easier to, to do the iMacs. Yeah, that's cool that you met the acting voice of Jim. What what Comic Con was that at, Catherine? Was that at San Diego or somewhere else? Denver Pop Con. I'm just trying to think of some that you might have gone to. We had some really good um, Jim cosplay around that I've seen. Um, this one couple, she would do Jim and he would do Freddie Mercury. And then they would stop and pose with microphones and stuff with people. That was always kind of fun. Evan says he's getting the Mac Mini with the new M1 chip. Oh, dude. That sounds totally rad. A friend of mine got the M1 MacBook like the day they became available. And he's like, he's really hardcore. 
about his computer stuff and he was like it's so freaking fast he like he couldn't believe it he's like it was light years different than older computers so he was very he was very impressed and i trust him like if he's impressed it's impressive he's not easily impressed i was like it must be good i thought somebody was texting me but it's just my watch reminding me to breathe in case i forget i guess it's like hey brian did you forget to breathe again So just working a little bit of structure into her clothing. So I'll probably, you know, overall I'm working light to dark today. I said sometimes I like to work the other way around. But because it's pink, I'll probably end up having to sort of go jump back and forth just to get the the balance between pink and red. It's so it's so delicate, right? And it says, I was tired of all the issues I was having. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I never know how much of that is the computer and how much of it it's Adobe. But I totally hear what you're saying. I'm probably wrong, but I tend to blame Adobe for everything. I'm just like, get your shit together, Adobe. So again, just working some little details in here. Probably need to go a little bit lighter in a few places. Just start to do a little bit of blending. We'll just keep working it as needed till we get it looking. But I want it to look really like pink satin, you know. So when it's done, we want it to look, have a little bit of a sheen and a shine to it. That will be the goal. And I think on Shayna, we did pretty good giving her like silver metallic jacket a little bit of a sheen. So it should be possible on Jim too. But we want it to be more like... Shana's is mostly white. We want gems to be mostly pink with just a few white spots when we're done. So we'll just keep building it up a little bit at a time, right? A little bit here, a little bit there until it looks the way we want it to. We'll see how far we get today. I, I've got about two hours total I can spend on this. We're about 45 minutes in. So we we may not get Jim completely done today, but we'll make we'll get a lot done on her. Which will be nice. Get us one step closer. And I've really been trying not to rush this one, but I do have uh, upcoming uh, Boba Fett sketch and Obi-Wan sketch, both full color. So I'll have to get a move on, as it were, and start pushing forward a little faster on this one. But it's been nice getting more and more of the full color sketches. I, I really enjoy them. It certainly has been giving me practice. I mean, I think about pre-pandemic, I don't even know when the last time I had a set of traditional paints out. I was, you know, doing everything digitally and, you know, now I'm just I'm doing so much more of this kind of stuff. So it's been a lot of fun and kind of a, a reawakening, if you will, you know. Just 
trying to vary the values here a little bit, get some, some darker areas, some lighter areas. And I can keep washing over it to tone things down as needed. That should end up looking pretty good. Well, Evan, congratulations on your new Mac. I hope it, uh, I hope it solves most, if not all, the problems that you've been experiencing. Because I know there's nothing more frustrating than all that tech stuff. I mean, even like today, my you guys had told me that the uh, image gallery above my head wasn't working the other night. And as soon as I touched it to try to fix it, it crashed. And I actually had to delete the image gallery and make a new image gallery. That was the only way to get it to work again. Otherwise, it just kept crashing. So... There's always something, right? There's always something that can break or act up or go wrong on these things. It never, it rarely works 100% of the time. Or at least if it does act up, it's when you least want it to. Like when you're trying to go live with video. <laughs> So just roughing in, again, some of the details on her clothing. Just trying to get some nice variations in tone and value and everything there. And we can go and come up with a little bit more of a mid value to do some blending there. Evan says, thank you. One of the things that's fun or funny about doing these sketch paintings live is you, it probably looks okay to you guys on the screen, but I get a lot of weird like reflections from the wetness of the paint because I have some pretty strong like overhead light to, to video this. And it can be quite entertaining to be me. And sometimes I'll just put down a stroke and I can't even really see the stroke I'm putting down because I'm just seeing like just the wetness of the paint, just the reflection. It's kind of entertaining or ironic or whatever you want to call it. Evan cheered five bits. Thank you, Evan. I appreciate that. Well, for those of you that watch Tiki Tuesday, uh, we had a sketch commission request for the Mai Tai Fighter, and that was so much fun. Uh, I had a ton of fun with that. And I actually showed it to the production partners that I'm working with on some Tiki mugs, and they, they liked it a lot, but they were fast to point out that apparently someone had already done a, a, a Mai Tai Fighter design years ago. And so that's okay. You know, it was a sketch request. It was... It was just for fun anyway, but uh, apparently out there someone has done has done that idea and did like a limited edition, like 50 mug run or something. So it does exist, um, which is a bummer, but that's all right. They were very nice. Oh, have fun, Bex. It was good to see you today. Hang in there. So, just a little bit of blending, I'm trying to vary between some lighter and darker value here just to get some shape and form. So I think we'll let the clothing dry a little bit before I come back and revisit it again. Now, I think on screen, the contrast between these pinks is looking really strong, and, and I can tell you in person, it's more subtle. But we'll make sure and do 
some blending here to make sure that it's definitely not too extreme. And then I think I'll want to come back to some of these shines and just do like a really light pink wash into them. And then I can go with like some white paint and pull out the ones that I want to be strong versus maybe the ones that can be a little more subtle. But that's the nice thing about this gouache is that you can, you can reactivate it and paint back into it, which can give some like really nice, really nice effects. That kind of makes it a little bit more fun too. And then with most of these, what I'll do is I'll come back with like a colored pencil and deal with any like little minute details that are maybe, I don't say too small for the brush because I mean, you can do it, but that would be easier with um, the pencil than the brush. Just a little bit, just blending out some of these values so that we can get hopefully like a really natural flow to this fabric. Something that looks, I mean, it's, you know, real satiny, so it should look organic, but still have like a, a sheen to it. Evan says, finally home. And he redeemed to hydrate. Oh, cool. Let me let me jump right on that. I could use that. So are you home with your new Mac, Evan? Because that's exciting. Good for you, man. That's exciting. It's always exciting to get a new computer when it's, especially if it's the thing you use every day. Cheers. Thanks for the hydrate. Uh, it arrives tomorrow. Okay. Well, that's still exciting. At least you'll have the whole, the whole weekend to kind of like get it set up and doing everything you want it to do. That'll be, that'll be fun. I think it's also weird about technology. I guess it's, it's no different than like buying a car, but you know, you, you'll get one computer that is just like rock solid, reliable, always works. And you could get like the exact same model of the same computer and have like nothing but problems with it, you know? So it is kind of strange how the old joke about, you know, oh, it was, must have been made on a Friday or something, you know? It's just kind of kind of strange how regardless of what the specs are and how it should should be, you know, bulletproof. Some are just seem to be better than others. All right, I think that's really starting to come together now, which is nice. Like I said, I'll probably on these white hot spots, I'll probably do like a really light pink wash and uh, and then come back and I don't want all of it to be white. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You know, I want it to be satiny, but I don't want every sheen to, to blow all the way out to white. 
So we'll do a little bit of a little bit of stuff there to clean that up. And says, what iMac do you have? I have the 27 inch iMac. Uh, it's not like the newest, the newest one or anything like that. It's, uh, which is it? It's the 27 inch Retina 5K and I'm running 32 gigabytes of RAM and it's a 3.7 i5 and I think my older one was the i7 and I kind of feel like even though the the older computer was older I kind of feel like that i7 processor might have been a little bit snappier but I'm not sure I'd have to look into it but it but my previous one just seemed uh, a little bit better overall even though it looked exactly the same um, but it was so old that it just it couldn't run Big Sur or any of the newest operating systems, so it was it was it was definitely time to upgrade. Um, it was it could barely run, you know, like whatever version of Photoshop it was on. It was just getting a little bit outdated. But you know, sometimes when you have a really good computer and it's been really reliable, you're you're less you're not in a hurry to <laughs> to get rid of it. You know, and that's kind of how I felt about that one. It was it had been so good. I was like, I know that whatever I replace it with won't be as good. Okay. Oh, hey, have a good day, Catherine. Thanks for hanging out with us. I guess enjoy your meeting. <laughs> Evan says, I like the iMacs are all self-contained. Yeah, I do too. I like that a lot. And I, I color on laptops when we travel. And I know some people that only work on laptops. I'm not sure I could do that, but um, I mean, I could if I had to. But I think with my eyesight and stuff, I prefer the larger monitor for everyday stuff. Gonna mix up some more pink here for her hair. Make sure we go a little bit darker than what we had before. I think the trick with Jim is when you look at a lot of the, like packaging materials and stuff, like her pink gets really close to red on the darkest areas, and so you have to really just watch that walk that fine line between pink and red to, to get it to look like it did back in the day, you know. Uh, Evan says, my old computer was a laptop, but I used a 22 inch Wacom. Oh, that, you know, that's another way to do it, right? Is to, I mean, you know, if you're using like a big Cintiq or something, like you said, like, you know, a Mac mini uh, might be perfectly fine because you don't, you don't care what screen the computer has because you're using the, the Wacom screen. So that could definitely be a really useful setup. We used to use Mac minis in the studio for um, file servers. And people thought it was crazy, but it worked really, really well because they were so much faster than any kind of like off the shelf solution at the time and at a much cheaper price. And uh, now we're using the um, Western Digital, I forget what it's called, but the little self-contained uh, internet file server, or not internet, uh, ethernet. And we've been using those for a couple of years and they work really, really well. This paint is a little more wet than I wanted it to be, but 
that's all right. It'll dry out pretty quick. So just going in with a little bit darker value now. And we'll start to add some more detail to the hair. Uh, Evan says, I watched the Superman video you made. It's totally new way of coloring. I never saw you do. Yeah, that's that's why I made it. I mean, um, I mean, I think I said it in the video, but I'm a real big believer in, you know, not every project has to be the same. You want to you want to like assess the project and see what that project is asking from you. Um, and I thought I thought that was an example that you know people like maybe don't know what I mean when I say stuff like that. And I thought that was a good example of it. But also it's about the collaboration, right? You know, as a in comic books, you're working with different writers and different artists, and not everybody has the same taste. And so you have to decide for your career. You're like, well, do I just have one style, and that's the style that I do? And if so, you have to understand that you will get some work from that, but you will lose some work from that. And you have to be okay with that, right? If that's what you if that's your goal. And so like with my illustration work, I kind of have a style. And I know that I you know, I pick up jobs because of the style and I don't get jobs because of the style. And so with coloring, you have to decide if you're going to be that person or not. Now with coloring, for a long time, you know, I've been very adaptive when it comes to style. And so I'm okay with that. And I think that because mostly because we are working with a wide variety of creators. And so, you know, when it came to this Superman book, uh, Phil Hester is the artist. I know what Phil Hester likes. He likes the coloring on his art to be clean and simple. Um, not really an animated style, but more in that direction. And he likes the colors to be very tasteful and not, again, not subdued, but also not like rainbow Skittles candy colors, you know? So I just try to take what I know about the artist. And I've, you know, met him several times and, and know him and um, then approach that project based on that knowledge uh, and hopefully, you know, meet or exceed his expectations, um, which is always the goal. But yeah, I have to say the feedback so far from fans on uh, that that Superman project uh, and the one with Jamal Eichel has been really, really positive. So um, that's good because, A, I like... I like coloring both their art, and um, obviously Superman is cool to work on too. So it's been it's been nice to see the response. Because especially anytime you do something that's slightly different, you never know how people will, will respond. Uh, Evan says, I can see a style change from about five years ago to today. I think the style is always changing. Always evolving. And I go through periods where I like to do things more rendered or I like to do things less rendered or the fads, the, the, the industry fads change, editor's taste change. So, And the technology changes. I mean, you know, we can do so much more stylistically now than before things that are more painterly or more creative or more artistic whatever you want to call it but also more subtle right i mean not everything has to be super duper rendered and um you know for a long time in comics it was sort of just like there was one way to do things 
And I think a lot of the publishers were sort of chasing each other into like, oh, that's popular. We need to copy that or emulate that or duplicate that. And we're seeing a lot less of that now. We're seeing a lot more variety and experimentation and openness to new ideas. So I think all that's really good. And let's face it, there's a lot more variety of creators, you know. Um, a lot variety of, you know, age and gender and ethnicity and from all locations around the world. And so there's just a lot more voices in comics than there used to be. And that's a good thing. It, it brings it brings diversity of style and of storytelling too. So it's all it's all good. Just working some more details in here. Trying to get all the little kind of bits of her hair to just start to come to life here. And I definitely want this to get deeper and darker as we get up around her jawline. Can start to work that direction here now. Uh, Evan says, I feel like I'm finally finding my style after all these years. That's good. That's excellent. That's, you know, I think one of the things that Christy and I say over and over when we're teaching classes is that like, you know, our job is not to teach students to like emulate what I do stylistically. It's to give people the tools and the, and the tips and the techniques they need to get around, you know, creatively in Photoshop as a colorist, and then take all that information and use it to, you know, either create their own style or just integrate it into their style, whatever that may be. And I think for some people that idea comes really naturally and for other people it's not because they're just like, just show me, show me, show me what to do and I will do it. You know, that's all how a lot of people feel. And, um, it's hard to be it's hard to be successful that way you have to find your own voice and your own vision and so whether it's painting or photoshop or probably you know creative writing or like whatever it is right like people can can teach you technical skills and creative skills but it's what you do with it that makes a difference and that's probably the the hardest lesson for people to learn and to hear and stuff All right, so we are really moving along on this pink now, so that's good. I think there's just a few places where I'd like to soften up on her clothing. Lestuda says, hello, people. What is up, Lestuda? It's good to see you. Good to see you. As you can see, working on Jim and the holograms today. Yeah, let's do this. You missed Catherine and Bex were here for a while, but both had to bail out for like Zoom calls or something. So, let's see if we can get this light enough. It may not be light enough yet. Nope. I want really, really pale pink. Like, I can barely see you, pink. Uh, and reading posture check. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. So I'm just going to go over some of these white spots and just wash in a really pale pink. And then I can always come back to the ones that I want to be like really white and paint over them. But I want, I don't want the white to be so dominant. So. Work a little bit of pink in there, just a little at a time. And then we can always go lighter or darker from there. But gotta start somewhere. 
Uh, Evan says, I'm... Oh, Les Dudas says, Man, I stayed up until 4 a.m. to watch one hour of Justice League because it premiered. I still have three hours to go. Evan says, I'm so bummed I don't have HBO. I can't watch it. Hey, Evan, I saw that um, they might be coming out with a free or cheaper version of HBO Max that will be ad-supported. That's the rumor, at least. So... Stay tuned for that. Or you do like what Quench Press does and you just subscribe to it for one month and watch everything you want to want to watch and then uh, unsubscribe. Yeah, let's do this. It says HBO Minimum instead of HBO Max. I like that. HBO Min. HBO Lite. <laughs> Is that what we would call it? HBO Shareware. All right, just doing a little bit of blending on some of these pink elements. Just to kind of get it all to work together. <laughs> Let's do this is like kidding. So let's do this. Um, Without spoilers, I mean, I saw the original film, but um, how did you enjoy the first hour? Like, are you psyched for it? Was it worth the wait? Does it seem radically different or just like a recut? As I always say, inquiring minds want to know. Uh, Evan says, yeah, I was thinking about just subscribing for a month. Uh, Let's do this. So good. I wish I wasn't so tired. I would have kept watching. So different. Okay. That's good. That's. I'm like, if you're going to do it, you got to like go for it, right? I mean, it can't just be like a very light edit or something. <laughs> like, I want to I wanna know that it's. I was kind of so disappointed in the original film. I just, I've been very, very weary and wary <laughs> of. Um, of this so I definitely be looking for some some positive reviews to know if it's going to be worth my time Let's do it says you don't realize how cringe worthy some of the scenes were until you don't see them in the Snyder Cut. It's amazing. You're like, wait, I like that scene now. Huh, interesting. I think Christy will be the ultimate test because you know, she really did not enjoy the original. So if they can win her over, then they'll have won the entire game. All right, let's start, let's make a, her skin color. Let's start going that direction. Since we've been playing with all these pinks, let's move to some peachy values. I'm debating, do we just do it right into the pink? I think we do, I think we just go for it. Evan says, so did Snyder get kicked off the movie or did they just change everything he did? Um, Les Dudas probably knows the story better than I do. I, the, my understanding was that twofold Snyder had a, uh, was it a death in the family? Some sort of like family trauma. Um, so there was that. Um, and then they also say like creative differences with the studio. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Les Dudas is saying his, his daughter passed away. So yeah, I, know, I remember it was some family 
trauma, big deal. Yeah, very sad, very sad. All right, see if we can get this skin color looking right. I wanna make sure it's more golden peach than her pink so that they don't kind of conflict in any way, you know? Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, that should be a good place to start from, so we'll start with that. All right, so this, it may start out a little too light, but I think that's okay. We can, oh, maybe not. Maybe not too light, maybe too dark. I think it'll be okay on our cheekbone there, but let's put some more white in that. It's too dark. You know, and that's the other thing about gouache paints is they always dry a little bit darker and a little bit more saturated than how they go on wet. So you have to be really careful about that. So it's always better to start with a lighter value than you think you want if you're not sure because it will it will definitely dry darker. Uh, Evan says, did he reshoot some scenes for this cut? I believe so. I, I believe so. I, and I think a lot of it was they redid a lot of the uh, CG and special effects and stuff. I, Les Dudas can tell me. I'm sure he knows more about it than I do. but. That was my understanding, at least. Sorry if I'm getting a little quiet here, guys. I always, I always clam up when I'm concentrating. This is definitely an area where I need to full concentration. You can see how, how loaded this brush was just about get coverage on her entire face without reloading the paint so that gives you an idea on that gouache paint just how how much liquid is really there you know and on top of that it dries so fast Uh, let's do this says only reshot a little bit. It's mostly unused footage from what we didn't reshot. Oh, there you go. But tell me if I'm wrong, didn't they change some of the CG villain characters quite a bit? Or am I thinking of some other movie? I'm, when it comes to these things, I purposefully don't keep up with it because I want to be like surprised when they come out. I don't want to know everything about it before it, before I watch it. If that makes sense. Uh, let's do it. it. Says Steppenwolf is very different. They changed his look and his voice. Oh, interesting. Change the voice too, eh? That is interesting. All right, let's. This is definitely going in the right direction, but I'd like to see that skin just have a touch more gold in some places. It'd be a lot lighter. There we 
go. Uh, let's do it says it's still the same actor, but they added more modulation or something. Interesting. Just to make it sound more alien, I suppose. More alien, more different. Just working on her skin details now. So I think we can take the skin color that we've made up and just do a version with just a little bit more depth to it for some of the shadows. We'll go down a brush size. Well, that's interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, I mean, out of curiosity as much as anything, right? It's because I'm super, super concentrating here on some of these little details. Well, good. I hope it's good. I hope it's worth watching. I hope it maybe reunites the fan base a little bit. Would be nice. Try to get my my big noggin out of here. Let's do this one silent. He must have went into multi-stream mode. Uh, let's do this says it's interesting. Someone I know just asked on Facebook if anyone has seen it yet. Out of seven responses so far, only one person didn't like it. Oh, well that is good. Well, like I said, it would be nice to see it, like, see the fans, like, kind of come together over something right now. So maybe that will be the thing to do it. Who knows?
just roughing in some of these shading and shadows on Jim, but I'll come back and probably do some blending on those as well. Uh, Lestu says, if it's as good as it started, it will be too bad because Snyder is done with DC movies. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, money talks. I'm sure Warner Brothers can tempt him back. Evan's like, I'm here, but I'm on a call. I know, that's what, that's the whole reason I'm streaming early days, because of all the meetings and calls I have to do, and I think everybody's in the same boat today. It's kind of weird. Evan Reem to hydrate. Thanks, Evan. some good blending going on our face there takes a little bit of time but it's starting to come together shadow up into her values here. Start to add a little bit. Just start to push that towards purple a little bit in a few places. Should start to look pretty, pretty good. This is kind of the fiddly part, but that's all right. It all has to get done anyway. Um, Evan says he takes his glasses off like me to see up close. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so nearsighted that I definitely, I, I have to, if I'm really going to get in tight on something, I have to take the glasses off. see pretty well with glasses or contacts but I can only get so close with the glasses and then it's like I just can't focus anymore uh, let's do 
Just a little bit of shading on her chin, I think. Not too much. Just a little bit. Oh, Evan, are you asking if I have new glasses? Yeah, my glasses broke, I don't know, a month ago now, maybe? And so I had to get new ones. And they're okay. I don't, I think the prescription in the right eye is a little off. But overall, they're okay. Okay, but not great. that dry. I might have to do a little bit more blending on the chin, but it's coming together there. So let's look at her lips next. We definitely have to go to a smaller brush for that. Oh no, the old ones broke right in half right there, so I couldn't fix them. I wish, man, I love those. I'd had them for over five years. And unfortunately, they don't make that frame anymore. So I got some that are very similar, and I like the look of these just fine. But the right eye prescription seems a little off. Like I find myself leaning them forward or moving them over a little bit to see clear. So it just doesn't, it just seems like it's not right. And I've had them looked at and adjusted once, but I think I'm going to have to just like demand a new lens or something because it's not right. It's not right, I tells you. So these detail details are pretty tiny. I probably should do like some of when I was doing sketch cards, nobody was doing it, but they are now. They're getting the, like the big magnifiers with the lights built into them, so they can paint extra fine details on their cards. I should probably do something like that for my sketch commissions. Evan says, my son got new Harry Potter glasses. He looks like Harry Potter now. Well, that's awesome. It's always good to look like Harry Potter. That's always a good thing. All right, so let's... She has just a little bit of blonde in her hair. So I think now's a good time we can work up some really pale yellow. And this yellow pigment is really strong, so we'll probably have to cut it with some white or some water or something. I will say that's one of the interesting things about these gouache paints is that the variance in the pigment strength is, um, I think acrylics are more consistent in that the red, the blue, the yellow, the pigments are all the similar strength. And so if you mix equal amounts, you get the results you expect. And I think with, with the gouache paints, it seems like certain colors, the pigments are more intense than others. And so like the red is seems way less intense than the yellow. And then maybe the blue is, the blue is pretty strong. So you have to kind of readjust how you approach the paints compared to like a 
acrylic or maybe something like watercolor just because of the the variance in the pigment. Uh, Evan says, for Halloween, we're going to dress up like Hagrid and Harry. Ooh, that's a good idea. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, let me get all the pink out of this brush. Maybe. Maybe not. And then we're just going to go in with a little bit of this yellow. And again, the hair is interesting because, you know, some of it's pink white, but then just around the edges, there's a few little blonde streaks. And not too much of it, but just a little bit. And I don't know that they did that on the cartoon. I don't even, I need to look at the, the action figures they did it, but on all the promo art, it seems that that's what Hasbro did, so. I don't know if originally they thought it was like the pink wig over blonde hair, since the character Jerrica is blonde, or if the thought process was more like it helps frame the face. I'm just not sure what, what their original goal was, but it does have some, some little blonde bits in there. Not a lot, just a little bit. Let's do this says, you're a wizard, Harry. Uh, Evan says, getting ev everything ready for my Kickstarter, it's with the writer. Well, tell us about that real quick. Tell us um, what it's going to be, when when do you think it's going to go live, all that kind of stuff. I mean, if you can, tell us about the project and... When you think, you know, maybe tell us maybe something about the, the characters or the... Whatever you want to share. I've done a couple of Kickstarters and I'll tell you, they're full-time full -time jobs while, while they're live. Uh, Evan says, superhero comic based on the Hawaiian culture. Ooh, I like that. Now, is this your idea or uh, was it someone else's idea and then you, you, you got involved with it? Like, how did all this come about? says it's all me wow cool man that's really cool good good for you that's exciting but you said so you have so you're collaborating with a writer and then what about the art are you are you going to handle coloring duties or color and art or what's the what's the goal there That's be okay to start with. Uh, Evan says, I need a writer and a friend is helping with that and I have somebody for art and inks. Oh, fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. I hope it all comes together. Kickstarters, like I said, it's a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. Um, don't forget that Bleeding Cool, 
they do blog posts about Kickstarters on the weekend only. So you either want to contact them ahead of time. Um, so that either yours comes out the weekend before or the first weekend of your campaign. Uh, sometimes they'll want, want you to do like a special uh, reward tier for for Bleeding Cool fans. But I know when we did High Five Killer for comics, gosh, almost like 30% of our backers came from Bleeding Cool. So it was a big deal. And when we did Fin Manifique, it was a smaller number, but that was to be expected because the comic was more women's female centric. Uh, and I think Bleeding Cool has like a little bit larger of a male fan base, uh, but there were still plenty of blogs and stuff that were more than excited to to help spread the word. So definitely reach out to all those people as soon you know as soon as you've got kind of got your process started, but before you go live so that you can. Because, you know, the way Kickstarter's algorithm works is it's based on the, the rate of people backing your campaign every hour. So you do want a bunch of people to back it as soon as it goes live because that'll push it to the front page of the Comics Kickstarter page. Um, and, of course, once it's on the front page, then more people can see it and those people can back it. And so that helps you out, too. But you have to have constant backers because you don't even want to go like an hour without someone backing the campaign because then that lowers you in the algorithm. So you really just have like have to have like a constant, uh, you know, barrage of press, different blogs and websites and stuff promoting you. You know, every not that not that one website will promote you every day, but to have it so that there's something coming out every day. Uh, is really good because that algorithm I mean it, it it like at the end of your Kickstarter you can look and see you know and with ours like the algorithm was responsible for you know at the end maybe as much as 30% on Fin Manifique so it, it can make a big big difference uh, Evan says I will handle the colors but three people that influence my coloring will do a pin up nice See if we can get this pale blue going here. There we go. So I'll probably come back to this bell and do like a really light wash, but I want to get some of these like speckles and stuff in here now so that we can get that like texture stuff part going. I'm just laying in kind of some light washes on the belt and then I can go back and tighten those up but because it's so textured I wanted to really get those kind of roughed in first And that should allow it to be easier to then kind of tighten up the details and stuff afterwards. I 
I think a lot of time when you're doing gouache or watercolor, the temptation can be to like work really tight and really opaque, and that can look really cool too. But on this particular one, I think going in with some like loose washes and layering them up is going to yield the kind of the better results. Hey, Quench Press, how's it going? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Working on Jim and the holograms today. Making some progress on this one. Just about done for today, but got a few more details to work on. A few more little spots we can give some love to. Uh, need to let that dry. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, hey, Quench, while you're on here, I, uh, I showed the uh, my TIE Fighter sketch to the Tiki Mug guys, and um, they loved it, but unfortunately, someone has already done a My Tie Fighter mug. Uh, they did like a 50 piece edition. And everybody was really nice. They're like, oh, Brian, your version looks cooler. You know, it was really, it was really kind. Uh, but yeah, it has been done before. So. so unfortunately, that just means there won't be any interest in, in producing anything based on that idea. But that's okay. But it, it was fun. It was fun to do it. And I think Quinch Press had a great idea. And all the reactions have been super positive. Like, I think everyone loves it. So it's definitely good on you, Quinch Press. So just going back in. You know, when I, when I painted the pink over some of the highlights, I said, oh, I'll come back in and, you know, add some white to a few of them. And so... So what I want to do here is just get some of them to pop a little bit more than others. Make it look good. Uh, Quinch says, I had two meetings, so I couldn't get on earlier. Hey, no problem, man. I've been joking the whole time. Like, the reason I'm on early today is because I've got so many meetings and stuff. This is the only time I had to stream today. Just giving this a little bit of pop. Because it's supposed to be like really like satiny, like a satin sheen kind of look. Super 80s. Maybe like satin or almost like spandex kind of look. I mean, not spandex because it's not tight, but you know, that shiny, satiny, nylon kind of look. Oh, while we've got the three nerds on here, um, I got a thing from Twitch saying they're going to completely redo how audio works because they've been having such problems with the copyright takedown notices and stuff since the pandemic started. And one of the things they're going to do is give creators the ability to have audio sources, some that would stream live and some that, um, but you can say like, I want this audio source to be in the live stream and not recorded. And I want this other, other audio source to be in the live stream and recorded so that then the recordings you can pick and choose which audio sources go into your your actual recording of your video. And I think that would help eliminate issues for a lot of people. Because if you just have something on in the background and the microphone picks up, it's happened to me. You know, I haven't got a takedown notice, but I've got a, a you know copyright notice warning or whatever that 
you know, you can't monetize this video because there was background music or something. And so, or maybe like the Gilligan's Island stuff that we do, uh, we'd be able to have more of that in the live stream, but just not in the final recording. So hopefully those tools that they're making work because that could be really beneficial, you know? Um, Evan says, you can't have the Mai Tai Tiki mugs produced because it was done before, lol. The, the TIE Fighter one is what I'm talking about. I mean, it's not that you couldn't bootleg them, it's that, you know, the people who actually produce who are behind producing a lot of the mugs were like, were like, we think it's a great idea, but it's been done. Quench press, uh, sorry, my son came out and was talking, so I missed all of that. Oh, that's funny. We were just talking about the, the My TIE Fighter quench press. That um, the the mug producers, the production partners, really liked the sketch, but they had they were said that someone had done a My TIE Fighter in the past. And they had uh, uh, so they were less inclined to be interested in doing anything with it. But they really liked the sketch and um, were very, very kind and complimentary about it. So, all right, guys, well, that's my time for today. I have to clean up and get ready for my next meeting. But we got quite a bit done on Jim today. So we have Shana done. We have Jim in progress. Uh, next stream will start on Kimber. So thanks everybody for hanging out today. Really appreciate it. Uh, for the three of you guys, we've got six people on. Let's let's roll the credits, and then we will come back and see if we can raid somebody. Um, I can probably hang out on the raid for a few minutes, but not for too long. Uh, Quinch says, I could see if the people who did it before had some exclusive licensing deal. Just because someone did something before seems weird, like how many times have we seen Batman origin story? Yeah, no, I get it. I think, yeah, I think Quinch, like, if it was geeky tiki, like I could probably, you know, if I had a relationship with them, which I don't, you know, they might be interested. But the the two that I have relationships with were both kind of like, well, somebody's already done that, so we're we don't want to, that kind of thing. So um let's take just like 30 seconds and we'll run the credits and we'll come right back. Woohoo, look at those cheers today. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. <laughs> Quinch says, I don't think you should work with these people anymore then. No, no, Quinch, they're all good. Um, I think, you know, when it comes to these things that are um, intellectual property adjacent, that everyone's trying to tread lightly, you know. That's my guess. Or maybe they were just trying to let me down easy. Who knows? Hey, um, Farley Crates is on. We haven't talked to her in a long time. I think we should run over there. Is that okay with you guys? Sound good to you, Les Dudas? Thank you for the cheer, Les. Appreciate it. So thanks to everybody who's hanging out today. Thanks for everyone who's following, who's subscribing, who supports us on Patreon and every other way. Really appreciate it. Um, get your emotes ready. Get your likes ready. Get your cheers ready. We're going to raid Farley Create, so stay on target, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!
I'm getting ready. I gotta clean. Gotta clean up. We had a slight change of plans. Oh. Um. Um. Tracy got her second shot, so she's out. Mm. Not feeling well. And the only reason we were meeting at Yard House is because it's closer to her. Okay. So they want to go to Ariba instead. Okay, that's fine. We've got a little bit more time. Okay. I'm just getting ready. You can see where I'm at. This so far. Nice. Come along. Mm-hmm. Did you get your uh, colored pencils you were ordering? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used them on the first of the two. It looked like it, but I didn't know if you got them. Sorry, they're showing off my Instagram and then I can get off. <laughs> 